Hickok 45 here with the Springfield Armory Echelon. Let's see if it shoots. One, two. All right. Oh, let's get him. <laughs> Seems to shoot. The real test, though, is over there. Well, I thought I heard it, maybe not. There we go. <laughs> I have to remember to hold low. I have discovered it prints so just a little bit high. Yes, the uh, Springfield Armory Echelon, you've been asking about it. Finally got one from Bud's Gun Shop uh, on loan. And, uh, you know, they've been out for a month or two. You've probably seen a few videos on it. And uh, I've been asking what we think. Well, I don't like to think a lot, but uh, I'll think a little bit when there's a firearm to be fired and to uh, think about. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll just, uh, I'm not really late. We just get it when we're, uh, I don't know, able to, we're in the mood to, and all that sort of thing. I don't want to help uh, promote firearms for uh, introductions of firearms, but I, I like to try out these new guns and uh, sooner or later and see what they're all about. And this one, you know, it, it, from the pictures of it and what I've seen, it didn't strike me anything different. It's just another polymer pistol, Glock 17. Uh, out here I brought out the uh, 17 or the P320, you know, essentially from SIG. It's another, you know, this is a nice pistol, another big polymer pistol, full size duty, you know. Hard to get excited about, maybe, because I prefer something in a, a compact size anyway uh, strikes me as a big pistol really you know in a world of smaller and smaller shootable firearms uh, a Glock, or Glock 19 size gun I, I would say Glock you know what we're talking about with Glock 19 a compact polymer pistol in that size range uh, seems bigger and bigger to me uh, so uh, you know uh, a big old duty gun seems really big they're fun to shoot though and there's obviously a place for them so the echelon and uh what do we think about it well like i said got it from buds can i load it and shoot it some more uh it it's uh i tell you what bottom line before we get too far afield i think before i forget to i want to put some hollow points i have them While I'm thinking about it, I'll, I'll load those in a magazine. Man, I'll just go ahead and try the hollow points. You you want your firearm to handle hollow points. It's a defensive firearm, right? Uh, so, where was I? I don't know. I interrupted myself. Uh, I, I was ready not to be impressed with it. and uh, But the more I've handled it and shot it and learned about it, uh, the more I kind of like it. It feels good, it seems well made, and uh, it, uh, it is not just a, you know, a dressed up XD or XDM, uh, it, it seems to be kind of a newer design. It's made by the same folks in Croatia, who's at H, I think it's on the slide, yeah, HS product, uh, but it, it really seems like a new design, and uh, there's some cool things about it. For example, I like the slide. I love the cuts on the slide. And uh, you know this little, they call it a trench right here. Where you can grab that and, you know, cause it's cut into this, it's pretty neat. You don't have to reach up at the end. And then you got the little uh, flare in the back like that, like some other firearms have lately that make them easier to operate. This one's not even an insert. It's just the way the uh, slide is shaped. It's a milled, so that's pretty cool. So. Let me shoot some of these holler points. If it won't feed hollow points, I have no interest in it. I promise. The cowboy. Yeah. Let's do away with uh, Kentucky and Tennessee right here. Let's get to Kentucky first. And then Tennessee. <laughs> uh, who's green? I don't know. Boston Celtics? <laughs> Pretty good bowler, too. Let's go back to the gong with a hollow point. Open one up on him. There we go. Holler point. Yeah. 
A good feeling gun, I, I tell you, uh, <laughs> it's fun to shoot. I've enjoyed firing it the last whatever week or so, and I fired it several times, and it's it's uh, kind of grown on me the more I've messed with it. Uh, I, I like it. The, the one negative I noticed with it that you probably would not as much, and you've heard me talk about this before, with, with this uh, SIG, yeah, that breaks about the right place. That feels pretty good. Uh, with this one, because of my long fingers and my big hand, uh, that's a criticism that you hear from me occasionally, that someone who is six feet tall, or five, two, or whatever, you wouldn't hear that from probably. But again, the trigger breaks rearward a little further than I like. It's back here a little bit, you know, further than I like. I just uh, you'd like it a little farther forward, you know, be nice. But, but it's not horrible. And it's got a little kind of creep. It finally gets to a bit of a wall. Trigger, I'd say, is average for a striker fire. It's not bad, but it's average, I would say. And as usual, it seems worse when you're not firing it. Now, how's that for a brilliant statement? This trigger seems worse when you're not firing it. Well, well, you know what I mean by that, I think. When you're dry firing it, you don't have ammo, and you're just testing a trigger, like, uh, do I like that trigger? Uh, I don't feel all that great, you know. But when you got ammo in it and you're shooting the firearm, uh, you know, you don't notice it as much and it feels, you know, pretty good, other than breaking a little bit further back than I like. The reset's really nice. Uh, yeah, really short reset, really short. It's just right there, okay? It's just that all of that's a little bit further rearward than I like, okay? So that's one of my negatives of it, but uh, not, a, not a deal breaker, okay? We know it, it feeds hollow points. I don't have a holster for it, uh, but, but speaking of that, I appreciate Alabama Holster, uh, their support for the channel. They make great little concealment Kydex holsters. You've seen them around here for a long time. Uh, pocket holsters, purse holsters, and I really like their purse holsters, so it's my preference. And uh, their belt holsters inside the waistband, outside. Great, great company. Appreciate their support. Can I put another mag in it? I guess I need, no, I've got one, don't I? It comes with a 17-round uh, mag, and I think this is a 20 round mag or 21 uh it's not marked 20 or 21 but it uh i forgot what my, my notes that i had it written down but with this extender it holds about 20 rounds i think and uh there you go and as far as we knew no these don't feed in uh the xdms or the xds they they look really really similar you know i didn't try that i've got a i guess i've got a nine millimeter magazine somewhere for xdm but I didn't try, but I don't think they'll they'll work. So it's kind of a new offering. And before I shoot that, let me let me uh, field strip it, which is an important thing to do if you're going to uh, maintain your firearm and keep it safe, right? So you want to know how to field strip it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's kind of standard, of course. And it seems like uh, you know quality quality firearm. It really does. It has a double sear. Kind of, kind of for added safety and it's your, your standard uh, firing striker block it's striker fired and uh, that kind of thing now you've got your uh, optical uh, slot there and this one is a little different than some of them it has a set of pins and they give you some of these here that's a screw I guess I don't know some of that came with it you got your back strap you got a couple extra back straps for the size you want a loader and things like that but uh, there's a that is a pin set yeah it's a pin set and so the uh, optics go directly onto the frame take this off of course and there's a series of holes and in, in pins you can get different pins and configurations so you really just recon as i understand reconfigure the pins and almost any optic almost will fit about 30 different ones popular uh, optics you can put on there without the uh, buffer plate or whatever they call that okay you don't need that you just have to have the pins in the right configuration to align with your optic, okay? And you know I'm not an expert on optics because I, I really don't uh, use them. I, I guess I could say I don't like them. I don't like to use them, put it that way. I don't dislike them, I just don't like using them. Is there a difference? I don't know. <laughs> but I might be, I might be in a few years where I can't see or something, I might be the biggest optic fan on the planet, so I'm not gonna be too uh adamant about that i just uh, currently i just prefer 
regular sights on a, on a handgun. So pretty cool. And I really, as I say, I really like that flare back there. Boy, you can grab that or up here. And, and the serrations, you know, that's just something that it bugs me on some guns, including a lot of Glock models and others. The serrations are, are namby-pamby. I like these that really are deep and fairly sharp. Grab that thing and you have no trouble with that. I really like the slide. That, that's, that's cool. And, and the grip is fine too. I'm going to shoot it and shut up. Okay. So it feels good. Uh, let's go over there and do it. Wow. That, that ram is like invisible over there on the right. Uh, well, the right ram. Well, the only ram. No, yeah, on the left side of the field, but the right ram. Well, the ram on the left side of the field. I'll get it right in a second. Standing there, looking at the buffalo in the face. I'm gonna see if I can hit him, even though he's almost invisible to me. There we go. I can barely see him fall. I'll try the buffalo bison. All right, nice. How about that red plate on the left? There we go. Uh, how about that plate over to the right in the middle of the field, hanging there? It's pretty good. How about these plates right here? Okay, it does print a little high, so I was holding low, too low. At this distance, it doesn't uh, uh, show it's, you know, shooting that much higher. Uh, good shooter. Uh, like I said, the trigger's not ideal, but it's not bad. Not bad. Uh, so... As far as negatives, that would be one of them. The fact that it breaks a little bit further back than I like. Uh, what's another negative about it? I don't know, it's a big old pistol, big old pistol. The the grip is uh, is good, it's got, uh, I don't figure what they call it, adaptive something, but it uh, feels pretty good and they've got that everywhere. <laughs> Places where you need it or not, don't they? I was noticing, yeah, of course it's empty. Even at the end of the, the rod or the rod there, it's funny. And uh, yeah. Got tritium, tritium uh, three dot sights for this one. I think it's available with a, a U notch on the back, like the Hellcat. This is kind of a bigger Hellcat sort of firearm. Uh, and so it comes uh, one options with a, the U notch back here. And of course you can get uh, about any optic on there. And uh, it comes with a, I think one of them, I don't know if it's out yet, with a kind of suppressor ready with a, a uh, threaded barrel. Maybe higher sights, I, I don't know. Uh, and I think they're going to be offering, I didn't show you when I had that off, did I? They're going to be offering, uh, if, they don't, if they're not out already, different sizes of, of grip configurations and I guess slide length and everything. Because like the SIG, like this, this firearm is, uh, has a chassis here that is serialized. So you can see, yeah, through there, a serial number, that's on the chassis. They call that the, what, the COGs, and for Central Operating... Uh, gizmo, I don't know, but it, it's the chassis just like SIG has, and uh, that's the firearm. And so that's the serialized firearm uh, legally, and so you can put a different grip on it, slide so configuration, all that sort of thing, like, like SIG is famous for doing. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So it's, it's a different, different firearm. It's not a, uh, an XD, it's not an XDM. I don't know if they're going to discontinue the XD and the XDM line or not, but uh, yeah, I think this has promise, and I should be loading another mag. So what else was I going to tell you about? Anything with it? I don't know. Uh, it sells for around 600, I think, depending on where you get it. Maybe a little more. It kind of depends. Uh, I don't know. Let's shoot something else here. I don't know some different ammo. Just since we got it, uh, appreciate the people that help us out and. Uh, I think I've forgotten anybody, and I, uh, I'm glad you're here. You all are the biggest help. Let's mix up a mix. Can we do that? More hollow points. Yeah, those are hollow points. Will a gun still work if you put uh, two or three different brands or bullet weights in the same magazine? Huh? You ever thought about that, you new shooters? Uh, now, it's not ideal if you're... <laughs> 
you're going to a shooting match or something or anything if you know one round might uh, hit a little bit lower than another one or have a different feel or a different recoil or all that sort of thing but provided anything you put in this magazine has the proper power factor to operate the spring and slide and operate the gun just fine let's say i've tried six different types of ammo weights brands whatever and they all work in this gun just fine well i could mix them up in one magazine couldn't i and have five six eight different brands in here and it should still work, right? I can't think of any reason why it would like malfunction or anything. It just might not be the smartest thing to do <laughs> in terms of consistency with, with accuracy and, and all that. There should be a lot of difference, of course, you know, especially up close. I don't know, I just thought I'd throw that in in case some of you were wondering about it. Uh, I could sense that some of you were, right? It's a great bowling uh, device, I gotta tell you. Yeah, there's a bowling pin right there. There's another one over there. Yeah. Uh, now that round was uh, pretty light, whatever it was. Yeah, all those last ones sat, felt a little bit light. Uh, I don't know what those were, but uh, I guess they're some of the standard 124 grain, and all these hollow points are a little bit warmer, especially the underwood. I guess I don't, I don't know. It, it didn't know. But anyway, that's why you don't want to do that, generally speaking. Okay. But most of us have gone out to the shooting range or table. Maybe we had a bunch of boxes with a little bit left here and there, and kind of thinking, well, I just want to shoot this this ammo, and you know, we've done that before. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, I'll probably have to load one more mag before I let you go. There's probably something about it I'm not remembering. The chassis I wanted to be sure I mentioned, uh, that's that's really important to some people. That's that's a, a real feature to a lot of folks. And of course the, the optics, you know, the ability to put on a lot of different optics and not having to buy those those templates or those plates for that might be really appealing uh, to you. It, it seems to operate fine, uh, the, uh, the slide lock and everything. You know, works works fine. You know, you notice it broke down simply. You didn't have to pull the trigger, which is important to some people. It doesn't bother me. Uh, you got your Picatinny rail, and uh, you got a big trigger guard. Uh, the the grip does feel good. It does feel good. You got pretty good friction on this thing. And uh, one thing about it, yeah, I was going to mention. I I like the uh, you get a little bit lower bore axis. You know what I mean? The slide is. Right there, pretty close to your hand, lower than the SIG, I think. Yeah, the SIG's a little higher, and that's not a big deal, but you see the distance between where the slide is, like over my hand, okay? You get your hand on this, it's more like a Glock. Oop, there's that, that G word, Glock. <laughs> but you know, the, the slide is just right there. Now, what difference does that make? Some of you new shooters are asking, I hear you. Well, it just, uh, enhances your control of the firearms just come, coming straight back it's uh think of an extreme example what if uh for whatever reason the slide were like up this high you had a big polymer extension of some sort and you're holding it like down here essentially because the slide is up here so high or if i just held it like this and fired it you know you've got more uh, more rocking effect right so yeah not as extreme comparing these but still, it helps to have the bore axis down there close to your hand, all right? That's the last free physics lesson I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna shoot it one more time. Yeah, that was something else I wanted to mention. So I talked about the price of it. And uh, our impressions, I, I, I'm, I, I kinda like it. Uh, I do. I'll tell you, if it had a, a dream trigger, like some other firearms, you know, we occasionally uh, encounter, uh, with just the right break and at the right position and all that, I would really be raving about it, okay? Uh, I mean, it's another polymer pistol, and, uh, you, know, it, uh, you know, you might be saying to yourself and to me right now, just what we needed, another one, late to the game and all those, those lines, but, hey, more the merrier, uh, more the merrier. There is a certain segment of people, shooters, that will prefer this over the SIG or over a Glock because they just like to feel the slide maybe, if nothing else. And uh, it's well made, 
you know, whatever. So, you know, that is made in Croatia, but then a lot of good firearms are made somewhere other than in the United States, right? So, let's take a few more shots and get you out of here. I'm tired of listening to you. No, I'm tired of you listening to me. <laughs> what was I? Oh, I got my ears in. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm going to test this back here, this little flange, and make sure it works. Oh, yeah. I like that. I like that. Great serrations. Wow. Oh, we have not smoked pot with it. The ultimate test. Look at that. Somebody stuck that one right there. <laughs> Nice. Well, this is a jump up in the air there. Yeah, missed on the last shot. Well, that's what I get for not having my sights on the target. It happens. Whenever you have your sights off the target and you pull the trigger, uh, you're not going to hit the target. And uh, that's what just happened. That's okay. So anyway, the echelon, uh, now I have to confess, when I made the target there, uh, Springfield Army echelon, I misspelled it the first time, wasted a target. Because uh, I tried to spell it, I don't know, E-S-C-H or something, you know. I was like, wait a minute, that's not right. And uh, so anyway, I thought I'd just tell on myself, you know, because all of you thought I was perfect, but I'm not. So the Springfield echelon, I, I kind of like it for a big old duty pistol. Uh, you know, other than that trigger, uh, having, you know, minor negatives for me, I like it. Really like the slide and, uh, not bad. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes, uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms, you can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com, and also while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here, also uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.